And while I have you here as as a, a podcast host myself, I definitely have a lot of selfish questions for you about about your podcast. And I, you're one of the most prepared interviewers I've ever heard. Like the examples that you have are always you just always have tons of great examples that are right on the tip of your brain and stuff. How is it that you? What's your process for preparing for a podcast interview? Well, uh, I usually, let's say, I, I'll just pick an example. Like I just interviewed, um, oh, well, let's take the example, Jewel, who was a singer I interviewed recently. And she, that was a fantastic show. Thank you very much. And I, I didn't know anything about Jewel. I had never really, she kind of came out during a time when that style of music wasn't, wasn't my style, wasn't the kind that I enjoyed listening to. And so I didn't really know much about her. And so... Uh, I did several things. A, I read her memoir, of course. I read her book of poetry. I read, I listened to her music. I read the lyrics of her songs because, you know, songwriters are, are writers. They're, they're, that's where they pour their emotions and their heart and even their memoir into, um, in addition to writing a memoir. I watched other interviews she gave, which was very critical because you don't want her to deliver the same canned responses to you that she gave to other people. Um, and you know, uh, someone who does a lot of interviews, they're used to giving those, those same responses, not, not her fault, just that's how people do it. And, and then I found, and then I tried to think of what, what was I insanely curious about? Like, I don't want to interview someone unless I'm really curious about some part of their life or like what, you know, something I might've done differently that or that I want to learn from, or, or, or that I think, you know, not only do I want to learn from, but I want to get better from. And so I just really think hard about what what issues do I want, want to get better from? So I interviewed recently, and, and this podcast hasn't been released yet, uh, Chuck Klosterman. So not everybody knows who he is, but um, he just wrote uh, a book called What If We're All Wrong about how wrong um, you know predictions are and science usually is. And you know so many things are we usually change our opinions on every 20 to 100 years. And, but he's written nine books. He's a big cultural critic. He, he writes uh, music criticism, film criticism, and so on. And so I was talking to another guy who interviewed him, and that podcaster was telling me he was really curious about how Chuck Klosterman viewed his own role in society as a cultural critic. I didn't care about that at all. What I was more interested in, and in fact, insanely curious about, was here's a guy who, who, listens to music all day, watches movies all day, watches TV all day, gets to write about it and gets paid, gets paid insane amounts of money to write about it. That sounds like the dream job. So I was insanely curious how he got that job. And for me, it was a totally different kind of interview than I'm sure he's ever done before. Now, when you're reading somebody's work, how is it that you are parsing that work? I'm sure that it's, are you reading, do you read linearly? Do you read a, a book from front to back or do you have a certain way of reading a book? Uh, I read a book from, from front to back, you know, usually the way the author intended it. I read it that way. And then I, I, I sometimes highlight things that are interesting to me, but I, I rarely look back on those highlights uh, because right there, when you're in the interview, you're not going to really be able to look at the things you highlighted. Uh, it's just, you know, I usually try to read things as close as possible to the podcast. So everything's in my, still in my short term memory as well as, you know, hasn't really made the transition to my long term memory yet. And the things that stand out the most in my memory are the ones that I'm probably going to ask about. And those things that are then in your memory that you then mention off the cuff in the podcast, are those written down or are those strictly off the tip of your brain? Oh, off the tip of my brain. I remember one time I was interviewing Adam Grant, who wrote the book uh, Give and Take. Just and listened to that one today. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. He wrote the book Originals. It's great. Yeah, yeah. So I interviewed him about both Give and Take and Originals, and he was surprised. I, I was quoting the acknowledgments to him because I had a question about the acknowledgments. And, uh, uh, he, you know, he, he was surprised about that. But it's usually just things I'm curious about while I'm reading. And I, I don't write them down because there's no time to really look at them during the interview. And so that was strictly from memory, the, your, your quoting of the acknowledgments. Yeah. I'm wondering how you picked up that level of memory. Well, uh, again, if, if you ask me now what was in the acknowledgments, I can't remember. Like, I forget. Like, it was in short-term memory because I had just read the book. But... Um, I don't know. When I was younger, I was um, a competitive tournament uh, chess player, 
and memory plays a large role in chess. So perhaps I developed some skills from that. Mm-hmm. So you've been practicing oh. your memory. Yeah, and I've, I'm also a heavy reader. Um, do you think you've gotten any better at that level of memory? Over. Oh over no, time? I've definitely gotten worse. I'm I'm older now, so mm-hmm. like I would never be able to play. I would be, never be able to remember, for instance, chess games uh, like I did back when I was 18 years old. I'm also surprised that you're able to just pick up the books and read them straight through as somebody who, uh, like myself, I I can only read the part that I'm curious about. Like the same way that you have a question about the person that you're interviewing on the podcast, I have a question about the book. And so if, I'm, if I need to go to chapter five first, then I'm going to chapter five. I'm surprised. Well, it depends, how the book, it depends how the book's written. Like, like if someone's writing a memoir and they're writing about, oh, my great grandparents moved here from Ireland in 1837. I'm not as much interested in that. So I might make I, I don't usually skip sections, but I might skip sections where I think they're just following some kind of memoir format that someone told them to do. But it's not really um, relevant to the actual memoir. But in general, I, I read things, you know, straight through. How many hours of preparation would you say that you have for, say, the, the Jewel show? Ten. Yeah. And so I would say for every hour of podcast, I'd probably do ten hours of prep, mm-hmm. give or take two. And how did you end up 